I'm 705, we're live. Welcome everybody. I'd like to begin this meeting with a motion of council to approve meeting via use of electronic means given the current directives of the province of New Brunswick regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion made by Councillor Murray. Do I have a seconder? I'll second it. Seconded by Councillor Allison. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Mind it. Motion carried. Opening prayer. Can I call on you, Chris, please? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for tonight. Uh, we come together as council and citizens to do business and to uh, bring ideas, uh, to work on problems and to move our town forward. And we pray God for uh, vision and for wisdom for our counselors. We pray for favor to be able to get things done locally, provincially, and with uh, federal funding as well. Uh, we pray God you would bring favor to tourists to come here to St. George and new residents. We pray for this town to be blessed and for this evening to be a time where much gets done and we get to see things go forward. Uh, bless this time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chris. A motion to approve the agenda as circulated. I make Do the I motion that we accept the agenda. Motion made by Councillor Allison. I'll second that. Seconded by Councillor Murray. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Approval of minutes of previous council meeting, regular meeting of council, June 8th, 2020. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion made by Councillor Cook. I'll second it. Second by Councillor Allison. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Is there any conflict of interest? Hearing none, I'll move on to the fire report. Is Justin with us? The uh, Chief Johnson is on an active fire call. I think he may be still at the station, though. We'll just just wait a okay. moment to see if he's going to be able to get on. I don't think Chief Johnson is, is close to the phone, so. Okay. Want it read? Please, Councillor Cook. Town of St. George Fire Department report prepared by Fire Chief Justin John. Period report, June 2020. Response. For the month of June, we responded to five incidents. Zero incidents were inside town and five incidents were outside of town. The breakdown of the calls is one mutual aid call, one water rescue call, one grass and bushfires, two calls, and one alarm activation call. They did some training. St. George Fire Department held one training session at the Day Adventure Center. We launched the rescue boat at the Day Adventure Center, used a GPS plotter to mark the hazard spots on the river and in the lake. Other, the COVID questionnaire still remains in place at both stations to be answered upon entry to the fire department for all firefighters and non-fire personnel. The individu individual's temperature is taken along with signing in. Respectfully submitted, Fire Chief Justin John. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Moving on to building and planning reports, Southwest New Brunswick Service Commission. Is Alex here this evening? There, there I am. Hi, Alex. How's it going? It's going great. Thank you for attending this evening. Not a problem. So I'll just give the development office report uh, for July 2020. So um, 
The commission assisted the town to have another legal waiver signed by the applicants for development in the floodplain. Um, the commission also issued a development officer variance for a seven foot rear yard setback, a garage at 25 Williams Street. <clears throat> to date, there's been six uh, building permits issued. Uh, total value is near quarter million. Uh, additionally, there has been six development permits permits issued to date and similarly similar value actually my, my correction half million dollars for building permits and quarter million dollar for the development permits uh, no new subdivision applications have been received uh, to date but so far this year there's been two lots created and one parcel which have attained final approval with regards to enforcement uh, the commission has worked with the town on a dangerous and unsightly premises file uh, so this included reviewing the legal processes to have um, the PRAC service council's appeal committee, potentially. Uh, regional planning, uh, there's the regional housing study, which uh, I see uh, the town has shared on its Facebook, Facebook page. Uh, at, at today's date, I think there's been about 220 uh, responses through the survey, and this is nearing the end of the, uh, the study. So uh, identifying what the demand is for housing and uh, we're, we've already determined a vacancy rate. So we will send around the study when it's complete to council and anybody who's interested, developers and so on. Uh, and we expect it to be complete in August. So the survey for anybody who needs it, it's at swnb-housing.ca. And that is my report, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Moving on to delegations, I see we have none. So we'll move on to general reports. General government and personnel. For projects, we have canals awaiting installation of the cement walkway and picnic table area via funds received from community living, estimated at $10,000. This week, we also concentrate some work on the beach and brush cutting and cleaning. Thanks to Matt Murray for getting the swim area buoys in last week. The buoys lines were damaged and acre Anchors disappeared. We will be changing the buoys for next year. Lagoon upgrades, still on schedule to work in August. New well number six, after another EIA monitoring was completed, we are back awaiting on the province. Splash pad, Government New Brunswick slash Honorable Anderson Mason's office has expressed to support the splash pad at 50-50. Efforts are still being made to gather corporate sponsorship. Waterline across from Main Street at Clinch Street and Sewage Lift Station is slated for hopefully the 1st of August. Main Street paving, mid-August. St. Mark's Cemetery, phase one of three phases is ongoing now. Smet Monuments has reset in several headstones. Total three-year, three-phase project is estimated at $15,000 with funds from RDC. If you haven't had a chance to see this cemetery, they're doing phenomenal work. It looks great. People and places, housing developments, the animal shelter. After some delay, commencement on construction will be in August. On Dunwoody Corner, topsoil and trees have been planted, awaiting on BIA for possible purchase of a number of benches for Main Street in this park. Main Street Park, we have resoiled and seeded the small park area across from Pete's on Main Street, as well as remove dead shrubs. BIA, BIA and town partners on benches plan to purchase a number of benches for Main Street, matching the design of the trash receptacles. We are waiting on BIA's confirmation of funds. Uh, I wanna mention water bills. We have a, quite a few accounts that have had reminders sent out last week for residents at risk of being shut off Due to the state of emergency, we are unable to terminate services, but when it lifts, we will move ahead on water shutoffs. 21 properties have outstanding balances back to 2018, equating to a grand total of $24,648 on these accounts. And we will be coming out to collect the money or shut you down. Simpson Court Trail Access. We have made a small trail to connect Simpson Court to the former rail line walking trail thus access to the crosswalk on Main Street. Kent Street Playground, we are good to move ahead with the fence installed. However, we have some new equipment to install. 
The problem, we have more equipment than space because previously we received GNB funds to purchase the equipment. We thought we owned more land. And I just want to put in a friendly reminder, there's no heavy truck traffic on Carlton Street. And we have been receiving complaints of this occurring. Jason will be reaching out to various companies and reinforcing this as to no thorough through traffic. And that's everything. Any questions? Moving on to EMO status update on COVID-19 in town of St. George. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we, we still remain at an active level, uh, active monitoring, active level one uh, as, a, as a community. Um, still the state of emergencies in effect uh, with the province as well. I know that um, things seem to be somewhat normal now, but uh, both of those are the reality. Um, you know, uh, on June the 11th, uh, we did open the public library back up. So this is time since the last council meeting. Um, and it is only open right now, uh, Thursdays, one to four. Um, unfortunately, since the last uh, council meeting, there has been uh, the second death of COVID-19 reported in the province. That was on June the 13th. Um, and uh, on June the 15th, um, with some changes to the directive, the, we opened the basketball court uh, as well. Um, as of right now, pretty much everything is, is, is open, uh, certainly with lots of signage and, uh, you know, hoping that people are going to, uh, you know, pay, pay attention to, to the guidelines uh, in regards to COVID-19. The only thing that really is not open right now is the public washrooms at J.O. Spinney Drive. Uh, just there's a lot of requirements for, um, for cleaning those each day. So um, much like, uh, like any business, if there's, if there's some of the requirements are too, uh, labor intensive or, you know, something we just can't meet. We just, we won't, we don't bother opening it. So, you know, we are hopeful that maybe perhaps that will change or we look at some adjustments to uh, how we clean those, those outdoor washrooms. But uh, again, everything's pretty much opened up. Our, 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 all of our courts, our recreation areas, playgrounds, uh, Canal Beach. Um, so it's just a, just a matter of uh, just one, one thing. As of today, uh, 166 cases confirmed for the province, uh, with only one active case still in the Fredericton area, and over 46,000 uh, tests being completed in the province. So, um, you know, there are some lots of positive signs over the last uh, the last little while, but um, we're still not out of the woods yet. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to community services and partners. Uh, there's nothing to really report because we have no activities or events going on, unfortunately. But I do want to reiterate that the skate park, the playground, pickleball, tennis courts, as well as the basketball court are open again. Please remember to wash your hands and sanitize after using the equipment. Moving on to water and sewage. Town of St. George, water and wastewater report, period, June 2020, prepared by Leonard Lee. The average water consumption for May was 1,491.6 cubic meters, for a total of 44,736.6 cubic meters. There was no total coliform or E. coli reported. A third water break occurred on Riverview Avenue. It was in the same area as two previous breaks. This main was installed in 1981. This ductile iron pipe, which makes it even stronger and stranger as this type of pipe usually fails at a split down the length of the pipe. This was, as the other two, were a round hole about the size of a fist. Cody McDonald has completed his water course through Cal State University and is awaiting his mark. The garbage for the standby generator has been cleaned out after we installed the catch basin up front. This will hopefully prevent mud from entering the building. One of the pumps at the booster station had the check valve replaced as it was leaking by. Flushing of water lines has been completed for the spring. Sewer flushing is yet to be done. A pump at L SLS number eight was reinstalled with a new impeller and wear system. The sewage holding tank was pumped out of canal and a deodorizer added. Okay. Leonard Lee, former. Is there any way of getting his mic a little better? How did you guys find? Is this better? That's better. That's better. All right, next one's gonna be even better then. <laughs> transportation report, read by Councillor Cook. Town of St. George transportation report. Report period, June 2020. 
prepared by Leonard Lee. A dead tree was cut on walkway number two, as well as numerous trees at Canal Beach and cleaned up. Trees growing around the fences at the lagoon were also cut. Crosswalks have been painted as well as stop bars. Some cross hatches need to be done as yet, like at the high school. Lines at the town office were painted as well. Graduation banners were put up on Main, Latite, Brunswick, Mount Pleasant, and Riverview Avenue. They were subsequently taken down and the summer banners have been put up. The speed sign on loan from the Southwest Service Commission was set out for a week at a time on Brunswick, Main, and Riverview Avenue. It's since then been returned to Hemlock Knoll. Some asphalt work has been done, but we have much more to do. The cuts on Brunswick Street will be done and patching on Marsh Lane and Cemetery Hill will also be done. The curb and gutter was replaced on June 23rd. The area around the water break on Riverview Avenue is on hold until we see what work is needed to connect well number six to Maine. The flower baskets have been hung and are being watered each day because of the super dry conditions. I don't know who's watering the ones in front of the town hall, but they look incredible. I think I might take them home. Sweeping of various streets was done before the boom flail mower and the dual tires were installed on the track. Two of the three trails have been mowed. Cody was trained on the machine before Josh went on lead. The two lagoons were also mowed with the track. The John Deere mower had new blades, a belt, and a new deflector installed before the summer students set out with it. Training on it is now standard as part of orientation. The trailer to carry the mower had the lights repaired. Work on the corner of Brunswick and Wallace Street includes removing the asphalt driveway, granite rocks taken out, and trees and shrubs installed. The grass was also top dressed and reseeded. A new McAdavick drive was put up after the last one was bent. The stop sign at Latite Road and Mount Pleasant Road was moved ahead and the crosswalk signs on Brunswick Street were pulled closer together. The municipal parking lot sign off Main was replaced as well. Leonard Lee. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving on to tourism, Councillor Allison. Thank you, Your Worship. Nobody knew the tourist season would go in St. George this year. But the statistics show New Brunswick should be proud. We opened our tourist information center on June the 1st, and we have 40 visitors up to July the 1st. Surprisingly, we still wait for our first Atlantic bubble visit, which has happened now. Remember majorly at the big one up with the cars looking and families on their property. Not many yet, but probably tourists are excited to help get the information they need and they can stop in to get it. We continue to encourage everyone local or tourists to stop by and get information on our beautiful New Brunswick. New brochures are arriving all the time. I would like to say a thank you to Andrew Butler who works at our Tourist Information Center. He does a great job with our visitors when they drop in. Andrew is a graduate of Funday High and we would like to wish him all the best next year as he will be going to NBCC in St. John in the fall. Also um, at our Tourist Bureau, we have received our Explore magazine. In the magazine, St. George is on page 15. Everyone, please drop in and pick one up. Um, it talks about all of the areas in Charlotte County and different places to see in that. That's all I have at this time, Your Worship. What's your hours there for the visitors? Uh, nine o'clock to five, Monday to seven days a week. Monday to Perfect. Sunday. Yep. Okay. Moving on to economic development, Councillor Murray. All right. So um, as far as the community garden goes, we still have quite a few planters that are available since we fully opened up. Um, we are going to be meeting with CHCO TV to do a little broadcast on the garden. And it's not too late to join this year. You could always join in. I know Canada Green had some veggies that she had seeded that you could plant. You could do herbs. There's all kinds of different options. So we'd love to have you. There's lots of spaces available. Um, the YMCA has opened back up and they have began the program. <coughs> no problem. Um, and the buoys have been put in at Canal. And we did have a donation from Philip uh, Maxwell Jr. 
he donated 110 new buoys for next year. So we'll have a new set of buoys out there, which is definitely needed. Exciting. Yes. And that is all. Perfect. And I also one I have actually a question about contact tracing for businesses. Now, Jason, is it, it's mandated that all businesses in town are contact, like taking names and number now, isn't it when people come in? Yeah, they, they should be. It's supposed to be. According to the okay. guidelines. Take a name, number, and temperatures. Yes, even if it's just an initial, like a like Jay Murray and give a phone number, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. That was just another thing. Perfect. Okay, moving on to bills paid and payable on the principal to June 30th, 2020, in the amount of 248952077 cents. I make a motion that we motion made the by Councillor Allison, seconded by. I'll second that. Seconded by Councillor Murray. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. New business: appointment of planning review and adjustment committee (PRAC) as the appeal committee for the town of St. George. I'll just speak quickly on that one, uh, Your Worship. Just, um, any type of appeals related to uh, building developments um, or uh, regarding uh, building uh, building bylaw, they'll be uh, going. What's being proposed here today is that they'll be going to the PRAC, which the PRAC right now is is sort of our uh, our committee uh, to oversee any type of building development. Uh, it's sort of a, a hearing committee, and. Um, so this, this will be the committee that would hear any type of appeals if there's any orders given uh, in regards to, uh, um, you know, it could be uh, demolition orders or what have you. Um, so they would, they'll go to the PRAC. Thank you. Do, do I have anybody make the motion? Make that motion. Um, Can somebody read the motion? Okay, I'll make the mo. I'll read the motion. <laughs> Is it? it? It's on the the, the council the council notes. You want me to read it? Sure. Be resolved that the planning review and adjustment committee is the appeal committee for the purpose of bylaw AD, a bylaw relating to dangerous and unsightly premises that when serving in this capacity for the town of St. George Council shall be compromised of one of three of its regular members. Do I have a seconder? I'll second that. Seconded by Councillor Murray. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Awarding of tender 2020-06. Contact number 202-858.00, Route 172, Latite Road, Slope Stabilization. And before we do this, I'd like, Jason, do you have anything to comment on this? I can just, we can just wait for Councillor Cook to yeah. turn that way there. I, I can just briefly go over that. Um, Waiting on Councillor Cook. <laughs> he was having some technical problems, but we'll see. 
Yeah, you did have mic problems. We just have to, uh, there, okay, there is. <laughs> the code. Wonderful. Um, so just with uh, just regards to this agenda item, this is uh, the uh, tender uh, for the Latite Road slope stabilization. Um, with uh, COVID-19 procedures in place, bids were open shortly after 2 p.m. on June the 18th, uh, 2020 at the McAdavid Place by staff of the Town of St. George uh, and read out loud and provided to uh, CBCL uh, uh, engineering limited for review. Uh, tenders were received for construction stabilization for the northern slope on Route 172, uh, the Latite Road between Civic Number 96 and 106. Um, the following contractors submitted tenders uh, with the corresponding bid: Terex Inc. Uh, Three hundred and twenty thousand and seven hundred and fifty. Uh, McGuire Excavation Excavating uh, three thousand five hundred. $359,157. Keel Construction, $362,070. Funding Contractors, uh, $382,300. Airville Construction Limited, uh, $396,830. Coastal Enterprise Limited, $476,145. Falls Construction Limited, $576,000. $1,150 and Dexter Construction Company Limited uh, for $676,675. Uh, there were no mathematical errors found in any of the submitted tenders. All tender submissions uh, included uh, the appropriate tender security as well. Uh, the en engineering estimate for the project on Latite Road is $529,275, excluding HST. Um, all those previous tenders did include, exclude HSC as well. Um, and uh, to, 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 this is this project, just to, to bring everyone up to date as well, this project is funded uh, at 700,000 by the province of the province of the of transportation. So those, those are the tenders uh, okay. that we've received. Okay. Do I have a motion to award this project and I'll second it. Oh, who first? I didn't. I'll Ever. Make okay, who? I can't hear ever. Who? who? I'll make Ever, it. Everett moved the motion and I second it. For whom? For the Terex. Is that correct, Everett? Right, Everett? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Motion made by Councillor, this is painful, <laughs> Councillor Cook, seconded by Councillor Allison for uh, Terex Inc. at $320,750,000 for our contract number 2020 tender bid 2020-06 contact number 202858.00. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Hearing none, motion carried. Adjustment of gas tax fund plan for 2019 2023 amendment to the 2020 project. I'm looking for a motion to rescind motion of July 10th, 2019. Jason, did you want to speak on that first? Sure. Uh, just the previous. Uh... We, there was a motion made last uh, last July to accept the gas tax plan um, for 2019-2023. Um, so this would just, I guess we're just looking to uh, 
to rescind that motion, and then we'll be approving a new gas tax plan 2019-2023 uh, with Agenda D. Um, really, what we're trying to do is the the, the project for this year, 2020, uh, was paving Main Street East, along with the previous gas tax uh, program of paving Main Street downtown, which is still going ahead. Um, it's just that we'll be readjusting where we're getting the funds from. Um, we need to do this water line. Uh, there's a water line that's uh, Main Street heading down Clinch, so that work needs to be done. Um, and of course, that's a that's a water, it's a utility uh, budget. So there's, as we as we as we probably know, within utility water sewage, uh, very limited funds. So this would allow us to do that project. We do have funds available within uh, with a general budget uh, to, to do the paving on Main Street East. And um, it's just really moving around these funds um, to ensure that we can get these projects done this year. So, um, so there'll just be, again, just going back to that 2020, the only thing that's changing out of that, that, whole, that, that whole program is just what we're doing this year. Um, instead of being paving, it would be a water, water project. Okay. So do I have someone willing to make the motion? Make that motion. Councillor Allison. I'll second that. Seconded by Councillor Murray. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Adjustment of gas tax fund plan for 2019 to 2023, amended to 2020 project. I need a motion to approve the adjusted plan. I make the motion that we accept to adjust motion the plan. Motion made by Councillor Allison, seconded by Councillor. I'll second that. Councillor Murray, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion carry. And the last bit right here is declaration of surplus assets of the town of St. George. I'll read off the assets or, and um, Jason, did you have anything you wanted to add into it or is it just? No, just as we go through this year, one thing we, we were gonna try to do is go through some of the things that we have in storage uh, that we wanna sort of dispose of. Uh, things that just you know are beyond their use. Um, certainly, bringing this forward to council, council's aware of what uh, what we are disposing of, and um, if there's any questions while we're doing that. Perfect. So the assets are a vintage barber mirror with drawers, one estimated value one dollar. Teeter totter, one estimated value dollar. No longer in use SCADA system, one estimated value dollar. 50 foot utility poles, eight, estimated $100 each. There is a website that's set up, Jason, on Kijiji for these, or? Yeah, we, we make these, they will, once once uh, items yeah. are- But it will be on our Facebook for people to- Yeah, we, if they just go to our website, they'll, there's a link to go to uh, surplus items. Perfect. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion made by Councillor Murray. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Cook. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. I see we have no old business and correspondence. We don't have any. Statements by member of council. I just wanted to begin this with, um, as you've noticed, we're missing one of our councillors, uh, Acting Deputy Mayor Harris tonight. Our thoughts and prayers are with him and Carol and Eden tonight. Uh, she uh, is not feeling well, so we're sending all of our love and strength to the family. Anybody else have anything? I'd like to give a huge shout out to the summer students. Um, they came out and helped at Canal with the buoys, and they were amazing. They were very hands-on. They ran to home hard. They were super efficient. They were an awesome group of guys. Great. And with that note, I would like to also mention, I've been getting a lot of emails and people coming in and telling me how lovely and, and 
beautiful the St. George Rural Cemetery is. That is not us that takes care of that. There is a cemetery board that does that. And I would just like them to know that their staff is appreciated. Uh, people noticing what a great job they're doing and they are commenting. So kudos to them and it looks great. Okay, I'll open it up now for public presentations. See if there's any other attendees. Not sure if uh, just have one other attendee in, in the, um, the waiting room. It's just Chief Johnson. I'm not sure if we want to bring him back and see if anything you want to add. Sure. Could still be on a fire call. Sure. Yeah, he may be still may okay. still be on a, a fire call, so I don't don't see anything. Okay. Still him. He still he's, he still has himself muted. So, and I uh, don't see any other. Do you want a quick last look? And nope, nothing showing going on. Uh, we do just have what there's just one social media note, um, just regards to. Uh, just asking about the update and the updates for Day Adventure Center. Um, is it, um, you know, what's the status with the Day Adventure Center? Uh, I can, I can certainly give an update on, on that if you like your worship. Sure. Thank you. Um, right now there's no, um, we, Outward Bound is the, it was sort of the last uh, tenant that we had in there and they'll be vacating uh, at the uh, end of this month well, as soon as uh, I guess the pandemic allows them to get staff down here to, to vacate. They've had two buildings that were used. Um, apart from that, um, you know, certainly um, there, I know there were some questions around uh, a gate. Um, there's no plans to put a gate on at this point. Um, certainly heavily used during the summertime for, uh, for boating. I think anyone who goes down there during this weekend sees that there's a lot of usage uh, for, especially for the boating community, certainly in academic utopia. And um, we're still going to do some work down there. There's um, some restoration work needs to be done to the, the bandstand. Um, and, you know, I guess, you know, the bigger question will be, you know, as time goes on, what is the future of the Day Adventure Center? So I think that's something that, uh, you know, we'll continue to have those conversations uh, with, with, you know, it, with certainly probably this council uh, over the next, uh, next little while, what the future holds. So, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, you know, we we have had some complaints with as far as um, some noise and uh, youth being down there. We just would ask the public that if if you see anything that's of a concern, to contact the the local RCMP. There is a non-emergency phone number that they can contact to report any suspicious activity or activity that you know, maybe there's uh, after hours late uh, late music or you know, hooting and hollering um, they certainly can contact the rcmp for that but uh um you know we, we're aware of that we are talking to some of those youth and um but uh you know nothing nothing too strong us. great thank you so that's everything for this evening do i have a motion to adjourn Thank you. motion made by councillor cook date of the next meeting is Monday, August 10th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Uh, to be decided between now and then whether it's going to be in this form or in the meeting form. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.